and today we're going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce. So Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce was uh, published by Sentient Cow Games. I'm going to show you that there. This is a game for... help me out, where did you find it? Oh, it's right there. Oh, it's on the front. One to five players, ages 14 and up. And now the designers, they didn't put their designers on the box, so I had to go to the back of the rule book here. It is game designed by Chris Weller, Craig E. Sawyer, and Donna Ackerson. Art direction and graphic design by Chris Weller. Additional graphic design by Donna Ackerson. Writing by Craig E. Sawyer and Chris Weller. Um, and then character and card illustrations by Mo Musa. Cover art and other illustrations by Ron Joseph. Uh, and Jesse Hege for, um, yeah, wow. Uh, and then a lot of there's a lot. You know what? I'm going to show this. There's a lot of people involved in making this game. As you can see there, uh, sculptors for the minis and everything are listed here. But yeah, there definitely was a lot of people involved in the making of Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce. So let's start with um, the stats. Mm -hmm. So one to five players. We played this at two and three players. Yeah, oh, there. oh yeah, all the times are there. So we played this at two and three players respectively. I haven't tried this solo, but I could see how it would play solo just fine because I mean this is a thoroughly cooperative game. It's you mm -hmm. versus the, the game. Yeah, this is like a, a dungeon crawler. You walk around fighting bad guys, so it's it's you versus the game. Uh, ages fourteen up is even though it's not that difficult because it's a bigger, longer game. I think. You know, that's probably a good estimate because mm -hmm. other people younger than that might not have a good enough attention span for it. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, they have some, now the time estimates are not on the box. Uh, they're on the rule book here, though. So a short campaign is supposed to be two to three hours. An epic campaign is three to four hours. Uh, missions are half does, an hour to one and a half hours. Does say half an hour? Yes. <laughs> okay, so here's where I'm going to thoroughly disagree with some of the things I've written down here. Uh, so we played an epic campaign. Uh, they say campaign. It's really just a single game, It's but it's an all-day affair. It was like six plus hours, I think. We, we, were, we were playing all day. And we also, we played one of the missions that was supposed to be an hour to an hour and a half. And it was like a two and a half hour mission. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to thoroughly disagree with their time estimates. Now, granted, that's only the first few times we were playing the game. But the first few times we're playing the game totaled um, about eight and a half hours of play for two plays. And one of them was supposed to be the really, re one of the really, really short versions. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, it, it's... Uh, I mean, yeah, you could be faster. I think I think you'd actually be faster with more players because you'd have more people splitting all the setup and breakdown, especially for the setup for each of as the fights. As long as they know what to do. Yeah, as long as you know what to do. But yeah, it's definitely this is this is a epic. Is right. This is an epic game with a lot going on, and it does take time to play. So be forewarned. Now, normally at this point, we'd be looking at some of the components, but you know what? Uh, we're gonna. There's, show you a lot of components there's, there's a lot of oh. components <laughs> there, there, this game comes with a ludicrous amount of components in a good way there's awesome amounts of stuff in here but we're going to show you a bunch of it while we're playing we're going to play uh through the entire first section of one of the special missions and show you how the game plays so we're just going to jump to the table and during that time you're going to see quite a bit of the components out and then when we're done with that we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how this game plays and how it feels and we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, so here we can see a two-player game set up of a Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce. So now, in this case, we've set up for the specific scenario, My Buddy and Me. Which is why we're only using one of the two towers, though in a full campaign you would use both of the two large towers as well as the basement that's over here. So in this case we're just using the basement and one tower, but uh, we've done the rest of the setup. Now I'm not going to run you through the setup because the rulebook actually does a really excellent job of telling you how to set up and there's a lot of steps involved in the setup, even in a smaller game like this one. So I would, I would refer you to check out the setup in the rulebook. 
but we're just gonna we're gonna run you through the game so in this case in this particular scenario Lynn and I have chosen two characters I am being Hattori Hanzo and uh, Lynn is being Adam Starblaster and because the storyline of this game also involves us each getting a sidekick I have Kaltar the Atlantean and then you took I have Maury the Mothman. Maury the Mothman. Now we start in the basement. We've woken up in our cryo tubes, and we're going to immediately commence to start kicking down doors and exploring. So to start with, uh, we get to check to see if we can explore the room we're in because it does have a Roman numeral on it. So uh, my uh, we have to roll equal to our mental stat or less. My mental stat is a two. Mine is two as well. And as a two-player game, we each get two chances to possibly find an item. I failed both twice. Oh, you found one. So why don't you get us our first item for the our first room? first item is a jar of peanut butter. Now, what can that one do? Uh, heal one health and discard or give it to Blurry to have him to stay with you. But we're not going to need that because we, we just use the, uh, the allies we have with us. Mm -hmm. But we can but it use it to heal a health. Yeah. So that, so yeah, I'll take that because you took the first aid kit, yes. didn't you? Yes, indeed. All right. So in which case, uh, we're going to, now we know there's, uh, uh, we're going to, I'm going to kick, we have to choose who's going to kick in the door when we move. Um, which way do you think we should go, Lynn? Should we go into the center? Or should we go to one of these that we know definitely has something in it? I think we should go to a place that has something in it. Okay, because we're going to have to wind up coming back to the center anyway. But I'm just, just mentioning. So I, let's, you want to start just, with this room over here? Yeah, I'm just going to put an X on that. Oh, because we cleared it. Yes, we did. Thank you. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to kick in the door to this one then. So okay. now that takes the first action if a combat happens, that uh, which almost certainly will happen. That will take the first ac uh, action of my th three actions based on my three speed away from me by kicking in the door but then I for free get to move into the room so I'm going to kick in the door and move into the room uh so now what happens is uh we're going to draw an encounter card so let's see what our encounter card is we're going to raise the alarm level by one which uh Lynn just did there then we're going to reveal the objective token in the room which is the portal uh but it is not active yet okay <laughs> So now we're going to resolve the scenario. Lynn, read us the scenario. Um, okay. This cavern is made of pure crystal and Ooh. hums oddly. You feel a general sense of well-being hmm. until you notice the bad guys. Uh-oh. All players who enter room heal to health at the end of the encounter. Oh, that's nice. It only works once per player. Well, that's that's pretty nice. So now we're in the green, so we check our so green line. Get, um... We get one gray alien because we're in the green and we're one to two players. So we get one gray alien. Okay. Yes. Okay, so get us a gray alien. So what is our random gray alien? Gray alien number five. Okay, go ahead and put him on the side there. And we will get the initiative counter and the little cardboard standy for the gray alien. Oops, five. Here's his standy. So he's going to wind up in this room here. And five. He was uh, speed three. Okay, so now uh, we are going to roll a die each for our uh, to add to our speed for our initiative. I rolled a two, and my initiative is I get a three speed, so I have an initiative of five for this Ooh. round. I got an initiative of seven. Wow, that's good. you're going to be going first I'm almost here. certainly. So let's move you up to seven. Okay, and then we have to roll for our allies. Now, uh, Kaltar has a, a normal speed of three. I rolled a three for him, so he's going to get to be six, so just a little slower than you. Um, Mori is going to be at a four. Which is good, though, because that means everybody goes before the alien. He's almost certainly going down. So, well, Lynn, you've got the initiative, and you can be right there at the door to fire into the room if you like. So, what are you going to do? I'm going to shoot him with my pistol. Now, you have a speed of two, which means oh. you're going to get two possible um, actions. So the first one is to shoot him with the pistol. So the first thing you got to do is roll a red die, and you have to roll your accuracy or less to hit him. So you have an accuracy of four. You're very likely to hit. Oh, and you rolled a one. Now a one is a crit hit, which means she gets an extra damage die uh, of the same type that she uses for that weapon, which in this case is a green die. So you get two green dice. Wow, six damage. Um... What is his? Oh, his maximum health is four. He's dead. 
Yeah. You've already killed him. <clears throat> right, so now, because of that, Lynn, you get an experience for killing that alien. So Lynn is going to immediately up her experience uh, by one over here on her card. And um, then we each get experience based on what the encounter card tells us to get. And for being in the green, we each get one experience, which means I get an experience and Lynn gets one more. She'll still get a total of two experience. Okay, so that was great. Uh, and there's no other reward uh, for that encounter, is there? I'm just checking that. No, the only thing was, the, oh, the health thing, which we didn't get yeah, hurt. Yeah, we didn't get hurt. So then what we're going to do is we're going to, we received our experience. We're going to search the room. So again, we each get two chances to find something. Uh, hoping, oh, I found one. I got a two, so I found something. And you found something. Draw us two cards. What did we find? We found another pistol. Oh. And army fatigues. Well, that's the same thing. Here. Yeah, it's light armor. I'm yeah. wearing it. Uh, we don't actually need the army fatigues because you can't use light yeah. armor. So we can probably discard that. But a spare pistol might not be a bad idea. I've got a lot of strength. I can just carry it just in case like something happens where if, if we were to lose yours, like if you were to get killed, it might be a good idea to have a backup pistol so I can give it to you, mm -hmm. which would be very nice. All right. So we have uh, thoroughly searched this room, which means it gets a clear token too. these nice little uh, red X tokens here. We're going to throw one on the board and now we can move freely until we decide to kick in another door So Lynn, what do you think? Where should we go? Should we go off I think we over should, there? Or? I think we should just go around. Well, circle. we can't there's no door over here oh, We have to go it. back into the center before we can go to this that. spot So so we could either from here we could get back to oops. Sorry, Maury We could either get back to go into the center or we could go into yeah, here and see what's over there go over here. You want to kick that one in? Yeah. All right, so uh, again, since I've got the melee weapon, I'm going to kick the door in and move on in. And let's see what we got going on in this okay. room. So, so first, let's draw our encounter card. Encounter card. Okay, then we're going raise to the raise the alarm one level. Then let's reveal yeah. what the objective token is in this room. It is a chest, mm -hmm. uh, which is very cool. And then what have we got? Um, the card it says, you stumble across several dead bodies in various stages of decomposition. You feel relieved that it's not you, but, <laughs> but upon closer inspection, it is you. What? what? <laughs> the, the horror. <laughs> These are clones from a previous escape attempt. Upon successfully beating the encounter, the person with the lowest health may take a clone with gear card from the deck or add one more shared clone. So after we beat it, we can either add a shared clone or we can... What was it? The... Uh, Take, take a clone with gear card from the deck. It's got to be a specific A specific card. gear, yeah. Or we can just add a, sh a shared clone, yeah. which are like extra lives. So that's always nice. Okay, interesting. So what do we get in the room for the combat? Uh, two guards. Okay, so we're going to draw two random guards then. And we're going to see what their initiatives are and add them to the initiative board. It's these two. Okay, so well, Maury's got the initiative. What's Maury going to do with his three actions? Um, let's see. He's got, he's got some special abilities here. Okay, he's not in the same room as them, so he can't do that. But he can take an action to enter the room if he needs okay, to. Okay, so yeah, he's got three actions. So let's have him enter the room. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to do his flight attack, which is two white dice. Oh, wow. Uh, which one's he going after, or does it matter? I, does, they're both the same, right? Yeah, so you just got to pick a number, basically. Yeah, let's do five. Okay. First, you have to roll to hit them. Okay. He's got three accuracy. That's a hit. And that's a two white dice is actually pretty good. Of course, they do have one armor, so it will negate one of the damage. So it's going to be two damage coming in at which which one did you say? Five. Number five. So we're going to knock five's uh, life total down to a two, which is really good. He's going to be easy to kill for whoever gets to hit him next. Um... And then I guess I can I can do it again at the second dude. Yeah, right? do it to the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Wing, wing them both, and that way we can finish them off easily and get our experience. Yeah, three. That's a hit. So now Maury's t accuracy is a three, which means Lynn needs to roll a three or less. A one would be a critical. Four. So that's a four, but we knock one off, so it's a three, and it brings him down. And the reason we knock one off is because he has one armor, and the three will bring him down to one life. He is 
teetering on the edge of being taken right. out. And that's all of Mori's uh, actions. Right, which means Lynn can actually now do some taking of people out and is probably going to steal all the kills from him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to shoot five, which, whichever one is on one life. I think that was it's four. Four. Okay. Oh, no, six. Excuse me, number six. Six? It's, it's this uh, this guy right here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. Um, so I need to get a four. That's a crit. You get an extra die for the damage. Okay. So he should probably be dead. Yeah, he's dead. Which means Lin gets an experience. We're going to wipe him off the board. Uh, he was number six. So we're going to remove his initiative token and we're going to discard his card and remove that from the board as well. And then I have one more action. I'm going to shoot the other guy. Oh, I didn't get That's it. That's a miss. Yeah. Okay, in which case it comes down to me and I might actually be able to get a, an experience for killing somebody. So now I use my first of my three actions to kick in the door. I have two actions left. I'm going to take a swing with my giant wrench at the guard. Now my accuracy is normally only a two, but I get plus one accuracy and plus one damage while using melee weapons as my standard ability known as swordsman, which means my one is a critical hit. So that is going to give me two white dice for damage. So I'm going to roll my two white dice and that will be enough to finish off the other guard. And he is now dead, which means I will gain one more experience point myself, followed by a group experience boost of how many, Glenn? Two. Two. So everybody gets, that's Glenn and I, get two experience each, bringing Lynn all the way up to five, me all the way up to four. I need to get to eight experience to get to level two, while Lynn needs to get to ten. So that's, that's where we're at after that fight. So we'll also remove his initiative token from the board. Okay, so now um, we, I found the chest. I was the one who opened the door. So the chest allows me to draw two items from there before even searching. And what do I find but a armor crafting kit, which is an ability you can use to craft new and better armor, which you need to find certain items like duct tape and stuff to craft them together. It is a crafting ability. I do not have the use of crafting abilities and neither do you though. Mm -hmm. So I think we're just going to discard that one because neither one of us can use it. But I did find a med kit and I can hold one more item. I think I'm going to hold the med kit because that sounds really good and useful. Uh, then we get to search the room. So now this this uh, gets cleared after our search. I'm going to just put it in here now. I get two dice to search, but so does Lynn. I found one item. And Lynn found one item. So go ahead and draw us our two items we just found from searching we the room. We found a gun mount harness, which we can't use. That is for, yeah, that's for a different character and we're not playing with. a laser pistol. Now that is awesome. Um, I can use alien weapons. Are you able to I use... cannot. So that, that is all you if you want it. You might want to put okay. the... Well, it says, in addition to normal damage, the laser pistol does one armor damage. Yes, that's what the, the plus one armor symbol and on it. And it uses is. a blue die. And it does. It's way... So, and the blue die is way better. The blue die is very powerful. I'm going to replace my... No, you might as well put it in your backpack in case you, uh, something happens, an event happens where you might okay. lose it. You never know. Uh, no need to no need to discard things until we for sure need to discard things. So now we've cleared this room, and uh, now we're going to have to go into the center room where we know there is no objective token, but we but we still need to work our way to the other side of the basement because we haven't found the computer terminal to activate that darn teleporter yet. So let's let's all walk back to the room we're here before I kick in the door to the center room, and let's see what we got going on in here. So let's draw the encounter card raise the uh the alarm level by one and then uh we're there's, no, go objective there's no objective token to reveal so let's see what we got a bad omen the walls have primitive paintings of an eerie smiling man dressed in black that causes a chill to run down your spine oh boy the lizard men in the painting hold up a glowing skull that seems to protect them we get three lizard men oh boy this is gonna be a bigger fight all right three guys let's do this well, so I'm going to be going first, So, and I've got two actions to use. So I'm going to go after, I'll just go after the top lizard man. He's number two, it looks like. And I'll see if I can wail on him with my uh, huge wrench. I rolled a five, that is a miss. So I'm going to use my other action to do it again. Come on. 
I missed again. Total whiff from Hattori Hanzo, even though he went first, he did nothing. So now, do we want uh, to go first with Kaltar, or do we want to go first with uh, Mori? Let's do Kaltar, he hasn't gone yet. Okay. Well, he has a cool ability that he can do uh, against two enemies in the same space, and he's got two actions. So I think what I'm gonna do with him is I'm gonna take one action to move him in here, and then I'm gonna do his Sonic Scream which does uh, a blue die plus one automatic armor damage, though they don't have any armor, to two enemies in the same space as him, and he's allowed to do this once per encounter. So I'm going to try to hit both of them with a blue die's worth of damage. First one, uh, well, there's three of them, obviously, but first one's going to take two damage. I'm just going to go on the uh, down the track, basically. So the first one takes two damage, is knocked down to three life, and the second one takes one damage. So now it's Mori's turn. Mori is going to use one action to come in, mm -hmm. and then he's going to do his plate attack. Um, you going to do it on the guy who's still got the most hit points, or what are you doing? Um, to try weaken him down so you yeah, can go and finish him off? Yeah, let's do it on Lizard Man number four. Now, okay, let's see how this goes. Oh, he didn't make it. Uh-oh. Now, he's well, thankfully still got... He's got one more... One more action. No, he didn't make it. Okay, then it's uh, your turn, then. I'm going to... Oh, I have to move into the... Well, I can shoot from the door, You can right? shoot from the door, so yeah, you don't have I'm to move I'm going to room. shoot from the door. Um, and I'm going to shoot with my laser pistol. Now, you should probably go after one of the wounded ones, so we can make yes. sure to just finish them off and get rid um, of them. The one at three, so is that two? I believe it is. Okay. That's a hit. And so you, I need a blue... So you need to do at least, at least oh, only one damage. So you knocked him from three to a two. Uh, but how many, you've still got at least one action, yes? Yeah, I have one more action. You want to take another shot at him, try to yes. finish him off? That's a crit hit, so you're going to get two blue dice. Two blue dice. Very nice. He should be dead. dead. I mean, this, this probably would have killed one of the other guys. Yeah, wow, four. four. So he's going to be wiped out. Lynn's going to get an experience for wiping him out. And we're going to throw him off the board. And we're going to remove the two from the initiative tracker as well. And take the number two lizard man out of the room. Okay, so now we're down to two lizard men and they're going to get to go. So, uh-oh. So they're going to get to fight back at us. So the first lizard man, uh, we're going to do lizard man number one. His t first attack is a spear swipe, which is going to go at whoever has the lowest armor. So Kaltar has an armor of two. I have an armor of one. Uh, I have zero. Lin has zero, which means since he has to go after the person with the lowest armor, he actually has to spend his first action moving into the next room because that's Lin and she's in the next room. So that is going to waste one of his two actions. So that's actually pretty good for us. So he's going to walk into the next room to go and try to attack Adam Starblaster. And then he's going to have to roll a two or less. I'll roll for him. And he misses, so he's done with his actions. Now we're going to go after the second lizard man, and his first action is a tail attack. So he goes after whoever has the highest speed. So my speed is three. I think it might be the highest. Mori has three also. Ah, well then we go, uh, the tiebreaker is whoever's higher on the initiative track right now, which is me. So he's going to be coming after me. So unfortunately he doesn't have to, to move for that, so he doesn't lose an action. So he's going to take an attack at me, Lynn. Would you go ahead and roll him? He sure. needs to roll a two or less to hit me. He hit me. <laughs> Ouch. So now he's going to do one white die of damage to me. I thankfully do have one armor, though, so I will negate one of it. And he only did one damage. Woo! Whew, that wasn't so bad. But now he gets another action. And he goes towards his second attack and tries to do that. And that is a spear swipe, swipe which is going to be targeting the person with the highest health. Let's see, I'm at seven. I'm at nine. Which means he's got to come after you, which means he's got to move, and he won't <laughs> actually get his attack. But that also means we're going to have to move to come into contact with them again. So now we move to the back, to the top of the initiative, and I'm first again. And I've got three actions. My first action is going to be to follow them back into the room with you. And I'm going to try to take some of these guys down. So I'm going to take a swipe at the guy who's already wounded, who is Lizard Man number one. Let's see what I can... Oh, I miss. I'm going to take another swipe at him. Come on. There we go. That hit. So that's going to do one white die of damage. And I did two more damage to him, but still did not finish him off. He is really kind of tough. 
So then we're over to Mori and uh, the and uh, Kaltar. Uh, do you want to take Mori first this time? Sure. Mori is going to spend one to go into the same room as them. Mm -hmm. And then he is going to do his flight attack. Now, who is he doing this one at? Is he going to go He's at the one who's undamaged? He's going to do it. Because the other guy's only got two hit points. Like, you should be able to finish him pretty easily yourself. Yeah, let's let's go number four. Okay. Oh, he didn't make it. Uh, but he has one more action. He's going to try again. Come on, Maury. No. Oh, man. We're whiffing this time. All right, so Kaltar's going to go in, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go after that one to try to at least uh, let you get the, the experience. So first attack is a miss. It's going to roll again. Oh, man, but unfortunately, I'm whiffing as well, which means we're down to you. But okay. thankfully, these guys aren't that tough. They haven't done a whole lot to us. So we need to get some uh, some I'm, boost to our stats. I'm going to attack number one. Finish him off. I'm going to try. <laughs> you got this. No. 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 I'm going to try. I got one more. You got this. Come on. Oh, that's a yes, hit. That is, is a hit. hit. It is a hit. Okay, so... I'm going to roll a blue die. He should be dead. Yes, and he is toast. So Lynn gets another experience. And Lizard Man number one is now dead. We're going to remove him from the room and from the initiative track. And Lizard Man number two, uh, excuse me, not number four, who is left in the room with us, is the last one left to act. So he goes again first after highest speed, which I think we decided was me, mm -hmm. uh, which means he's going to take a tail lash at me. Roll, tell me if he hits. He's a two or less. Why do you only hit when you're being the bad guys? <laughs> so he gets one die at me. How much damage a is coming in? Die? Yes, one white die. Uh, but I have the one armor. I'm really glad I took that armor. That's, that's uh, very useful. Okay, actually, I kind of forgot. My army fatigue should be giving him a negative one to hit, so actually he should have missed. But yeah. he didn't do any damage, so it's the same effect anyway. I just forgot about that, that the army fatigues had that ability. Now, uh, he's now going to go after his second attack, which is against the highest health, which I think is you. Yes. Uh, now, for you, let's see, he needs a two or less to hit. Uh, he rolled a two. Unfortunately, I only hit when I roll, uh, <laughs> roll for the bad guys also. And that is going to be one white die coming at you. And he did three damage at you. So I'm glad we got all those health kits because well, we're going to need them. Can I just immediately use my health kit? And it takes an action to use it okay. in combat. So we have to wait till after combat or have to use it as an action. Okay. So we're going to just take the three damage. It's not that bad. You're still doing okay. Things are hard to move. There we go. Okay. So now we're back to the top of the initiative track. And let's see if we can't finish off this last pesky lizard man i hit him with a crit so that's gonna be two white dice on him so three damage to him so he goes from five all the way down to a two and now let's see if i can get that lucky again i'm gonna roll again second attack i missed on the second attack but now we can just have um uh our two allies hopefully finish him off let's throw an attack from kaltar he missed throw a second attack from kaltar uh, he hit this time, and he gets two white dice for his normal trident stab, and he finishes them off. Let's just get rid of him so we don't have to deal with this guy anymore, because they were getting to be a headache. Now, how many experience do we all get for completing that encounter? Uh, three. Nice. That brings me all the way up to seven experience, which is only one away from leveling up. I did level up. So you hit level two. Now, what that means is you're going to go down to zero experience and go up a level. Going up to level two, your character has the option to either gain two maximum health or gain one point in mental ability, which would make it easier to I search like rooms. Gain mental. mental ability? I don't blame you. So we're going to put a mental ability token on your board there. And now that the combat is over, why don't we uh, go ahead and use one of those... Uh, use some. Uh, we can use a health pack or to heal you. You've lost three life. A health pack will fully heal you up. And um, now we can search the room and we clear it. This room. Well, we we were supposed to be uh, in this room. Okay. We had, we had run back <laughs> while we were fighting him. So I'll throw a clear room token on here. Let's search the room and see what we can find. Now I get uh, three. Yes. Items, right? So you need. Well, no, you get two dice, but you need to roll three or less. Oh, okay. 
So you got one. I found nothing. So what did we? What did you find? I found a radiation suit. Oh. Immune to radiation damage, but it is light armor. I cannot. Is it better than what? Uh, immune to radiation damage and gives you one armor. That might actually. That's a little bit better than my army fatigues, because the army fatigues have a limited usefulness. Uh, only in the earlier area. So I think I'm going to get rid of the army fatigues for the radiation suit because actually that would be an improvement. Okay, nice. So uh, we have now searched that room. It's time to move on to the next room. Where do you want to go? Um, we have let's go into this one with the glowing green bats. Okay, so I will then I will kick in the door and let's see what we got. So draw us a card. Uh, bring us up an alarm level. Ooh, those alarm levels are getting high. Uh, we're going to reveal, finally, the computer terminal. We're going to be able to get on to the next uh, level of the area uh, after we fight the boss of this level now. So what do we have for this encounter? Moldy lab. This room was once a lab to make weaponized fungus. Spores of alien mold still linger inside of leaky tubes. One of you tried to turn on the lights, but instead released a deadly spore. Oh, God. <laughs> Player that entered room can oh, make no. a mental check to seal the tubes. If you fail, oh, spores no. attack your immune system and reduce your health by two. Well, um, I don't want to take two damage, so let's uh, hope for a two or less here. Nope, I took two damage. Okay, and we ouch. get one lizard man. Well, that's not too bad. That's not going to be too big a fight. Okay, so, well, Maury goes first. <laughs> Maury, what are you doing? Okay, I guess Maury is taking one action to go in there. Okay. And then do flight attack. Do it. Nope. Nope, that's a miss. One more. You got this. Nope. Nope, you don't got this. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's on me next. I've got two actions to try to attack him with. So I'm going to need to roll a three or less. Nope. Try again. Nope. I whipped twice, which means it is now on to Kaltar. For Kaltar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use his once per level, uh, since we're about to leave this level, Fish Juice, where he can heal another player for hit points. Now, I've just taken that damage. He's just going to heal it all back on me. It's his first... Uh, and he's going to move into the room. It's his first action and heal me as his second action. And that's going to be it for Kaltar. So I'm going to basically, uh, I decided to not have to lose one of the health kits after this fight, and hopefully then you can finish him off, since okay. you have the best chance to hit him anyway. I'm going to just move to the doorway. Okay. And then... Four or less. That's a hit. Okay. You got this. Three. Three, nice. Another hit like that, and he's toast. That's a hit. He's toast. So Lynn will get one more experience. He is going to be dead. We're going to take him off the initiative track and take his, <laughs> his token out of the room. So we get the passcode, which means now we can backtrack in a moment, in a moment after clearing this room. Let's search the room. I found one item. Now I you two. you get to p draw two and discard one. Okay, so so let's see what you get first. Oh me? Okay, oh, I'll, it's first. A, that's fine. Give, uh, I found a sneak. Once per encounter, I can get plus one accuracy on my first attack. It is a athletic ability. I'm gonna take that. That's really cool. I found a oh the ability to use rifles, which I already have. Um, just I already have that too. We don't need that. Uh, and then it's Psy Blast. Attack an enemy with a Psychic Blast that ignores armor, usable once per encounter, and it uses two... Is that the orange dies? That is the orange dice. That, that, that's an awesome ability. I you am, should definitely I, take that. I am able to use Psychic abilities. Wow. So. so now you are tanked up with your laser pistol and your Psy Blast. I mean, Psy Blast is really good. Two of those orange dice is fantastic. Wow. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to backtrack to the room with the teleporter in it. And when we get there, we're going, now that we have activated the teleporter, we are going to trigger the boss fight for this round, which is the Lizard Man Commander. So we're gonna put the Lizard Man Commander there and we're gonna draw a random Lizard Man Commander here. 
And here we go. And we drew lizard, this lizard man commander here, which we ha which has one armor, 14 hit points. Boy, is he tough. And three possible attacks, three total actions. Um, of course, I would have to enter the room. You guys have to start out because we have to pick who goes in the room first. So I will kick in the door. And now what is his initiative? Okay, so we're going to put the lizard man. We put the lizard man commander in the room and we have given him his initiative of three. Now let's find out what our initiative is. Ooh, I didn't roll very well, unfortunately. Uh, but it's still enough to be better than him because of my three speed. I'm going to be at four initiative. And where do you go to? I'm at five right now. And uh, Lori is going to be at uh, eight. And Kaltar is going to be at six. So good. They're gonna they're gonna soften them up for us, hopefully. So <laughs> Mori goes first. Okay, uh, well, what are you gonna do, Mori? Mori is going to use one action to come into the room. Okay. So he can, Time to do a big attack if he can. So oh um, let's see his other ones. Uh, it just, it just stuns. His other one just stuns, and then it's a dodge. Well, I think you should go with the stun because that'll make it so that on his first round of combat, he won't be able to hit us back. Okay. So it, I think so it automatically, it's the red eyes of doom. It auto uh, hits him? It automatic, automatically hits an enemy, stunning them for one turn. So we flip his counter over to the stun side to show that on his turn he'll just flip back over and won't get to attack us. And that is going to be quite useful. Uh, that works for me. It's and then he can still do his flight attack because he has three actions. That was only the second action. That's correct. So go ahead and, and, and wail on him. Yes, he hit him. Flight attack is two white dice. Indeed it is. How many two? Two, and he has and one, one armor. armor, which means it's really only one, so he goes from 14 to 13. Ouch, this could be a tough fight. Okay, so now we've got Kaltar is next up on the initiative. So, let's see. So, Kaltar stuff is, is all kind of um, melee-based here, but he does have one that could possibly take off some of the opponent's armor, which I think think will be worthwhile so let's try to do that i'm going to move in and i'm going to try to hit him with the sonic screen if it hits he'll destroy his piece of armor and pot and do blue a blue die worth of damage so let's hope i hit uh i rolled a three which is enough to hit so now i do the damage before removing the armor so he does get to use this armor one last time so let's see how much damage i do it's only one damage, so it doesn't actually do any damage to him however it will break his armor so now he is at zero armor which is also useful and now lynn you are up next okay i am going to try out my psi blast that sounds like an awesome idea especially um, since you are just up to your mental ability yeah so now your current mental ability means you need to roll a three or less to hit and you got it with a three. So that's two of those awesome orange dice, and those things are pretty great. And did this have any extra effect? It, it bypasses armor. Oh, I already destroyed yeah, the armor. <laughs> <laughs> so two, two damage, <laughs> two damage. Uh, it could have been better. That was actually pretty low, but yeah. that's that's fine because we're, we're picking away at him, and you've still got one more action to hit him and with then, the laser pistol yeah, if you I'm want. Yeah, I'm going to hit him with my laser pistol, hopefully. That's a hit. Another two damage. We're chipping away at him, but don't worry. He's not going to get any attacks this round, thanks to Mori. Thank you, Mori. Okay, so now I get two actions this round, three on future rounds. So for my first action this round, I'm going to try to take a nice big hit at him with the giant wrench. And since I've got the sneak, I'm going to get plus one of my accuracy. And since I always get plus one of my accuracy with uh, melee weapons, that means it's the first attack is going to be a four or less. So very likely to hit. And I hit on a three, which means I'm going to get to do one white die worth of damage. And his armor is gone. And I only do one damage to him. Oh, boy. But now I get another attack. This one only hits on a three or less. Because uh, the sneak is done, it only works once. But I hit with a two, so I get one more white die of damage. And I do two damage this time. And this is working. We've brought him now down to six. And since it's his turn, all he does is, is get over being stunned and Mori can hit him again. Okay. Um, so, Mori is going to use his flight attack. You go, Mori. He hits. Well, yeah. 
And uh, two white dice of damage. He's going to do three damage. Oh, nice. That's going to bring him all the way down to three life, yes? Mm-hmm. Well done. So I think... God, we've got him so low. You and I should be able to finish him off. One of us should be able to... Well, everyone gets the experience no matter who kills him, so it actually doesn't matter. Mori gets two more turns. Oh, go ahead and finish him off then. <laughs> I was going to say, because actually when you defeat a, a boss, everyone gets five experience across the board regardless of who killed him. So here it doesn't matter at all. So he's got another fight attack in him? Mm-hmm. Do it, Mori. Four. Yeah, That's he's it. Dead. He's dead. Okay, so in which case, Lynn and I each get five experience. My first experience is going to make me go up a level which is gonna give me two hit points. And then I go up to four experience towards my next level. So I'm gonna get two maximum hit points. That does not make my, um, it does not make my uh, current hit points go up, just my maximum hit points go up to nine. So there we go on that. Uh, that is very good. And uh, that was a lot of experience. So now he is dead. We're gonna remove him from the board. We're going to remove his token from the initiative tracker because he is done. Uh, we're going to move his card as well. And now we can use the teleporter from this six here to move on to the six that is in the center area on the next level up. So we're all going to teleport to the next level up. And from here, we're going to continue searching this room. Now, the big part, a big part of the goal of this particular mission is to find the alien wrench, which we need to fix the final teleporter before escaping. So we're going to search around in this level before we find the alien wrench. Then we're going to move on to the final level where we're going to fix the teleporter and get out. As the danger level goes up, more and more bad guys will start showing up. Red will make random bad guys show up every time we do an encounter. And if we ever make it to the black spot, the man in black will show up and he will uh, seek us out and attack us. But after we defeat him, we will go back down to the beginning of the alarm level and be back in green again. Once we defeat the boss on the second level and move on to the third, we have to defeat the boss on the third level to teleport out, and then we will escape from Dulce Base. So now we're going to head back over. I'm going to talk about how this game plays and how it feels, and we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, so welcome back. That was how you play a game of Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce. Now, a couple things I want to note real quick before we go any further. We forgot to talk about the rule book. Now, the rule book is huge. But it's not as intimidating as you might think. Actual rules, totality of about 46 pages. There's a lot in here. But the actual game, as you could see us playing, is fairly easy. It's, 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 most of it's fairly self-explanatory. You move into rooms. You pull out the bad guys. You roll some dice. If you do the setup for the giant game, there's like nice full two-page diagrams to show you the giant game here with both towers out. Um, there's tons of diagrams in this rulebook, too. I would say this rule book is actually a very well done rule book. Tons of diagrams, very easy to understand. And even though there's a, a lot of information in here, it's actually, I mean, it's bright, it's colorful, it's full of diagrams, and it's, it's actually a really lovely rule book. This is actually a, one of the better done rule books I've seen for a big epic game like this. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, and we will have put up a little text on the screen we were making a mistake when we were doing the playthrough for this one and we didn't realize that it was totally filmed and done uh but the thing we had done wrong was we were giving the wrong initiative to some of the guys it would uh the bad guys it would not have uh changed the outcome really too much so we didn't go back and fix it but what it is is uh we were giving them initiative based on their speed stat which is normally how we get our initiative our speed stat plus a die roll whereas they have a separate initiative stat a separate set initiative stat which would have made them a little bit faster than they were so i just want to note those so okay let's get into it so this is this is a dungeon crawler mm -hmm. uh with a very funny tongue-in-cheek sci-fi parody theme to it you have a character that there's um there are, the characters in here are great one of the characters is amelia Earhart having uh, been kidnapped by aliens another is a samurai having been kidnapped by aliens and has been in cryo sleep all this time one of them is a genetic experiment two-headed psychic cow with guns strapped to its back i mean it's just it's goofy fun it's silly um that's kind of the feeling i get from this it's very lighthearted, mm -hmm. but it's also a lot of work mm -hmm. and that's going to be good start with some downsides now i know this is the downside you've been waiting to talk about go right <laughs> ahead it's 
Uh, first off, there is a lot of setup just in the beginning, setting up the towers and shuffling everything and setting up all the little standees. Now, let me just interject. When you have one or two of the towers up playing a game, this game looks amazing. It looks so freaking cool with the towers out there. But yeah, it does add a lot of time to the setup. And then in addition, you have to put counters out on all the rooms, which also adds more time. And there's tons of decks to get ready, plus all the counters to get in order and ready. So yeah, okay, go ahead. I just wanted to throw that out. And then um, once you have the game completely set up and you start playing the game, every time you enter a room, there's like a little mini setup because yes. of the bad guys. For the fight. And that, it's not quick. <laughs> it takes time to do that because yes. you got to find the right number. You got to find their their standy. You got to find their card. You got to find their little initiative point token, and it's it just seems a uh, very very fiddly and like repetitive to me. It's like you go, roll the setups. Yeah, you you you. It's it's set up, roll some dice. Set up, roll some dice. Okay. <laughs> so now I over and over and over. I like the rolling dice. I love. I'm just going to get into some positives because I don't actually have any negatives beyond your big negative there, which your big negative, I know you're, you're feeling strongly on it. I agree with you. I just don't feel as strongly on it as you do because I have a lot of other positives. You know, before I start raving about positives that I like about this game, though, let me give you a chance to throw in some of your positives. What are some things you like about Secret Unknown Stuff Escape from Dulce? I like the, the characters... And I like um, getting new abilities leveling and, up. and, and level, leveling up and getting uh, new equipment and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it would have been better if it was like a tabletop RPG instead of a board game. Well, yeah, cause the, the, one of the problems is uh, with how, how long it takes to set up and break down, uh, the, especially for the longer campaigns, you don't have the ability to play it in sections. Because, I mean, you'd literally have to leave it out and taking up your mm -hmm. whole table the whole time. Now, that's that's. I'm not really going to add much more in on the negative side because I'm, I'm more, far more positive on this game than negative. I do think there's a lot more positive than negative. And you've covered the ne what, what is the glaring negative already pretty well, which is set up and break down as a chore. And there's also a bit of in-game chore with setting up for each fight. That being said, uh, upgrading your characters customizing your characters when you level up you get to choose oh am i going to get health or am i going to up one of my stats uh getting new uh, new abilities getting new guns like you got that psychic ability uh during the mm -hmm. the game and you also picked up the laser pistol and getting those things are are awesome and and uh when we were playing the epic game that was the one thing like we were all having a good time customizing our characters there did get to be a point within the epic game where you were like this is just too long but before that, you were having a good time leveling up your character. Like mm -hmm. you were enjoying it. The 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 gaining experience and leveling up is as addictive in this as it is in like a role playing video game, where every time you level up and and they say, okay, do you want to put points in this or in that? You're like, ooh, ooh, what do I get? What do I get? And it's awesome. And I do really like that. Uh, I got a big kick out of that. So uh, that's awesome. I love the minis. I love all the minis. I love the, the fun characters. You already talked about that, too. There's some really cool characters in here. Um, the samurai, Hattori Hanzo, is my favorite. But uh, my second favorite is um, the two-headed cow, whose name escapes me at the moment. Isn't it like Sid or something? My, uh, hold there. on. The two-headed cow is Snippy Von Bell. And Snippy Von Bell is awesome because Snippy Von Bell has a lot of strength. Snippy Von Bell has a lot of mental ability. And while they do not get to start with um, weapons, what happens is you will you will eventually find a harness, which we had found in our game, the harness. And once you have a harness, you can mount guns on Snippy Von Bell. So or, you, you don't want to play Snippy Von Bell in a low player count game. But once you get... Uh, maybe well, three they, or four players. They start with a side blast, though. They do start with the side blast, which is pretty awesome. But the side blast can only be used once per encounter. Mm. And they do have a kick. Yeah. The kick is their normal attack. So, but the, the kick and the side blast are a little low. They're they're not they're not amazing. But once you get the harness, the big guns you can put on Snippy Von Bell are freaking crazy. I love it. And this is this is my favorite. This is my. Second favorite character. I love Hattori Hanzo because I love being the samurai. But Snippy Von Bell is my second. 
because I love all the stuff that they get. And I also love that since they start with three mantle, they're great at scrounging for equipment. And they also uh, have a great ability for psychic attacks once they start to be able to get psychic attacks. And they do start with that one side blast that they can do once per encounter, which is two of the orange dice. So that is really cool too. So yeah, uh, the characters are great in this. The models, they have models for all the bosses and they have models for all the, the player characters. Uh, normal little bad guys are little cardboard punch outs in standees that you saw. Those are fine. Uh, the towers look really epic on the table and the game feels really epic. So the big thing for me is if you're going to plan to play this, this is not a game you're going to pull out like on a whim. This is a game you're going to plan to play for the day. Even the shorter games are really like two plus hour affairs. Mm -hmm. So, which, which is, a, I mean, that's a normal medium to heavyweight game but those kind of games that are two plus hours you're still going to plan for and if you're going to want to do the epic campaign you're talking about a six plus hour game so the shorter ones you you might be able to plan to do and then play some other games later because you still want to set it all up ahead of time mm -hmm. but the the big one you're definitely going to play to be a, a whole day affair uh, and there's three levels of uh, length again there's the short campaign the epic campaign and then the special missions. So, um, yeah. Uh, I like all the different kinds of dice. I like the custom dice. I like the different kinds of attacks. Anything else you want to say positive on us? No. Other than the 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 labor involved in setup and breakdown. If, if, if this was way easier just to have battles where, you know, where it was just you didn't have to set it up. It was just like a card and it had everything you needed on the card. Or like a dial or something. Okay. Something where you didn't have to fiddle with like five different things just to have a battle and then do it all over uh -huh. again in two minutes. I would like this a lot more. Okay. So you do like the mechanics of it. You like the yeah. play style. You're just, it's just the setup and breakdown and the, and the setup of each fight that's holding back your rating yeah. a bit. So that being said, uh, I'm going to let you go first because I'm pretty sure I'm higher on the rating <laughs> than you are because obviously I've been very emphatically positive. I agree that those are negatives, but they don't hold it back as far much for me. Where are you at on a scale of 1 to 10 for Secret Unknown Stuff, Escape from Dulce? I love the name of this game. I'm at a 5. Okay, so I'd that's... i say, like, A for effort. Like That's the, middle of the road. The, the theming and, you know, part of the mechanics. <laughs> okay. But that just the one mechanic where you got to draw all the cards and then put all the little clippies on the cards and then get their little standees and then get their little that holds it back for you. Yeah, just no. But I, you're I not. Can't, but I you're can't not. Deal with that. But you're. But that being said, you're not negative. It just brought it back down to middle of the road for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be significantly higher. I'm going to be significantly higher now. Uh, some other, I some more pluses popped in my head while we were just discussing this. Okay. Also, there are in this. In this game, you have, check this out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight playable characters. All of them totally different from one another, all of them unique, different abilities, lots of cool stuff to explore with there. In addition to the big epic campaign and the shorter campaign, when you get to the back where you get to the special missions, which are all significantly different, give you sometimes give you special uh, equipment to start with or even allies to start with, uh, you have... Uh, for the special missions, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight special missions. Is it each? Is does each uh, each character have like a mission? Well, no, it's it's um the, no, because their their missions are based around different things. There are some missions that are specifically about certain characters. But uh, but not all of them have a mission. Like we just, we play like for instance we just played that one where the whole point was just to get to pick some of the the um, the allies mm -hmm. to come with you. But the point I'm getting at here is there is tons of content in here. So now if you enjoy this game, which I do, I think the enjoyment level of this game thoroughly thoroughly is way more than any of the negatives of the the difficulty and setup and breakdown etc. Uh, if you enjoy this game, you will then enjoy how much content they gave you in this game. Because there was tons of stuff in this game that you can do. And that is awesome. And I love that. And for that reason, 
along with all the other positives I mentioned before, the customization, the leveling up, how enjoyable and addictive that is, the cool different characters, all of that, I am going to give this 8 out of 10 stars. Because I really like it. There's a, you know what? I agree with Lynn that those problems are an issue. And you should note that it is going to take you time to set up, it is going to take you time to break down, and it is going to take you time to set up every fight. But that being said, uh, this is one of the better dungeon crawlers I've played in recent years. Uh, dungeon crawlers are a um, a style of game that I'm coming back into. I used to play them a lot as a kid with games like Hero Quest and Dragon Strike. And for a while, I felt like a lot of the games were not giving me the same joy those used to. This is a game that gives me the same joy that Hero Quest and Dragon Strike used to give me. And it makes me giddy inside a little bit. I'm just saying. So there you go. Uh, so these are some significantly different opinions, though. We are three stars different. Uh, I think a big part of whether or not we can recommend this game to you is how you feel about uh, a fair amount of time spent for setup. If, if you don't mind it, like I don't mind it, I would recommend it to you. If it's something that would be make or break for you, then I would not recommend it to you. And that's, I think, does that basically yeah. cover where we're at with it? Because I'm really positive in your middle of the road, and that's it's the setup that's the you, difference. You have to remember, it's not even just initial setup. It's continuing repetitive setup throughout there is, the game. There is, but see, I don't, I don't think it's as much of a problem. Like, this is a game I would... Uh, similarly to like when we play Twilight Imperium, this is a game I would set aside a day for. I'd invite people over, we'd play, we'd break for dinner, we'd come back and we'd play more, and I'd be totally happy to do it. I would enjoy to come back and play this more again after dinner. Um, and they sent us an expansion too, so we're going to have to check out the expansion uh, and get back to you on a review on that. So stay tuned for that. So if you enjoyed this review and tutorial, and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And hit that little bell icon on my channel so you get alerts every time I upload a new video. And until next time, game, game on. on.